Welcome to the chaos. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Chaos Check-In, our mini-series where we check in with some of our favorite guests from Season 1 and catch up on what they're doing. Here on the Chaos today, we have our boy, DJ Damage. What up, brother? Yes, yes, sir. I'm loving a new set. Look at this. Yeah, what'd you think? Upgrade, Upgrade, right? Yeah, man, I'm proud of you guys. Look at it. I love your face when you walked in. You were like, literally, Uh mouth open, like, whoa. Yeah, very, very professional. I see what you got going here. We're trying. We're trying. So since last time we seen you, bro, it was pandemic. There was a lot going on, and you've switched up. You got a lot going on now in the world. Tell us Man, about it. Man, you know what? I wouldn't say there's a lot going on externally, but internally there's a lot going on. I think I was going through like a growth period. I don't know. It's it's called something. I don't know what it's called. It's like from the ages of like 27 to like 33, you're like shedding who you used to be and like the start of who you're becoming. So I feel like I'm fully going through that transition. So it feels good, man. I'm going to get a space. It's a lot of relearning. Yeah. So like, what, what have you had to le- relearn about yourself over this? Because I know you went vegan, which is something different than last time you were here. Oh, yes. You know, I got to change the diet. Trying to live, man. I'm trying to live. Um, I'm just thinking about my future a lot. And I think when I started, especially when I first moved here, but even before I moved here, I was always thinking about like one thing. My mind was just set on DJing and being the biggest DJ I can be and being on television. And then once you do that, there's a period after that where it's like, but what do I really want from life? You know, and I felt like my goals then were great. And no one tells you what happens after you accomplish your goals. They're like, oh, make new goals. But what if you don't have goals in the same realm? You know, like what if you want to do something completely different? And I feel like that's the space I'm in now. Well, I mean, that's pretty cool, though. It's like you're relearning. I mean, not only are you relearning, but there's a whole lot of new things that you're jumping into and learning Mm -hmm. about, which just, you know, uh, build your stretch out. It's awesome. Yeah, I think one thing I always loved was being behind the scenes. And I kind of was, I wouldn't say I was forced into like the front of the camera, but even when I went to college, I love to be on the camera. And they're like, oh, Abdul, you need to be able to be in front of the camera. So I think my life played out in the front of the camera a lot, which is great. And it was a great experience because I used to be super shy. But now I want to kind of dive back into what I love to do, which is being behind camera. So doing a lot more photography. I'm doing a lot more business from behind the scenes rather than being the face of it. And it feels good, man. Also, I think one big thing for me is, um, you know, when you're chasing fame, quote unquote, and I was indirectly chasing fame because I wanted to be a big DJ. Um, I wasn't necessarily chasing wealth. And people don't tell you it's two different things. You could be the most famous person in the world and not have a cent in your pocket. So I think, you know, passing that 30 year old mark and thinking now heavily about my 40s and I'm in my early 30s, it's like, what kind of mark I want to leave on this world financially? So that's another big change for me. That's cool because uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're on this track because season one, we were all about our experiences and in, in the yeah. club scene and like the partying and the fun. And then season two, we kind of transitioned into a lot of this like self growth period and what mm-hmm. people are going through internally. So uh, I guess talk about where that financial, where, where'd you find that, that that's fulfilling you now? I think what happened was um, when I first started DJing, I was 12 and I always been an entrepreneur. And as you, as a DJ, especially in those times, um, getting where you want to go, you start working for people. And I didn't even realize how much I got away from my entrepreneurship. So when you're not an entrepreneur, you're able to be fired. And, you know, in the entertainment game, you're going to pick up gigs, you're going to lose gigs. That's just what it is. You know, that's very natural. But after a certain amount of time, it's like, I don't want to be dependent on others for my income. And I've always been good with saving money, but I never knew how to invest money. So I think like, you know, getting these gigs, losing these gigs back and forth and always having a cushion, I would think like, what if I knew how to invest that money I saved? Because I always would just save a lot of money. And I think that's what took me down that like that financial road of like, all right, I've always been good with money. I have good credit. What's the next step? How do I invest? How do I gain interest on my money? Like what's those kind of avenues? And that's kind of like the journey I'm down now. Man, I wish somebody would have taught us that. I'm like, <laughs> right? So, well, no, like that's what I was kind of get into. It's like in your, in your, like you said, in your 20s, like you were kind of figuring out, and you get to your 30s, and everyone's like, once you get to your 30s, you'll care much less. In my 20s, I'm like, I don't give a fuck as it is, but I'm like, oh, I understand what you're saying because, like, as we're growing up, you're learning that a lot of the things we were taught are very unnecessary. Yeah. So you're unlearning it and you're relearning the things. It's like, yeah, I would like 
I went to school for so fucking long and I don't use any of that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, how come nobody taught me how to fucking open up a business? Nobody taught me how to start my fucking Roth IRA. Like, I had to learn all this shit. I've made a ton of fucking mistakes. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm glad I did. But it's like, why weren't we taught all that shit? So I go through that route a lot of just like, man, I get frustrated. I got to learn new things. But then I'm like, all right, it's probably for the best. But it's, it's like, you have that in the back of your head. Like, what the fuck? did we learn growing up? What was the point of all of it? I, I don't know. And I think it just keeps you dependent on the system, keeps you dependent on taxes. But for me, like you said, your Roth IRA, um, I had a guy, he randomly just asked me like, what are you going to do like at the end of life? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I mean, you're an entertainer. Do you, you don't have like a 401k or anything like that. And I was like, nah, I didn't think about that. And he, and he personally helped me set up not just a Roth IRA, but like three other accounts for my son for like emergencies and putting these bonds. And when he did it, I just was going along with it. But now like recently, like a few months ago, I actually went into those documents and read like, what am I investing in? And kind of, cause now I'm kind of like have that awareness and I start digging more into it. And I'm like, Oh, this is cool. Like I, I wanted to get into this now, but thank God I already made those steps before, but I kind of blindly did it. Cause I just trusted the guy. But I think a lot of people should really like, you know, take some time to be more financially sound. Yeah, I think like everybody who's like, quote unquote, entrepreneur, but in the entertainment industry, we all have this grand adios concept of like, I'm going to go to L.A., I'm mm. going to fucking make it, I'm yeah. going to make millions, I don't got to worry about <laughs> which is really not the fucking case in the slightest. No. Like, you really have to like. 20 years later, you ain't got no savings account. Bro, you, you just like man like and the thing is it's so expensive like so for me i saved a lot of money all the time like i would save majority of my income I always live be below my means my uh professor said that in college so that's like step one but step two is actually investing the money because as you know with inflation especially in la that you're running through that money quickly like if you lose a job or you lose a gig and you saved up some money okay for like next four months you might be okay then after that you're like scratching your head so it's kind of like okay Yes, one is good to learn how to save money. How are you investing income? And you also got a you also got a son too. So yeah. you gotta think about him, <laughs> his future. Not all, like I mean, we don't gotta think about that. All my money goes to me and what I wanna do, but mm -hmm. you like you have so many priorities besides yourself. Yeah, and I and I think for me, I had to start from like the ground floor. I didn't have anyone give me like a boost or I didn't come into any type of money. And I'm like, I do not want that for my son. At the very least, I want to give him the knowledge of how to like invest his money. And investment is not always like stocks and bonds and everything, but I, I totally applaud that. But learning how to invest in yourself, knowing like the right things to buy. Like um, I remember when I lost, I think it was around 2018 and that was like my first major layoff. And I looked around my apartment. I was like, but I have all the tools to make money. I had different types of cameras. I had all this equipment. I was like, thank God I at least invested in myself. So now I had no excuse to make content, to do shows, to do whatever I needed to do to get over the hump. And I was just so proud of myself because honestly, I didn't see that coming. But I was like, wow, the way I spend my money, I'm probably pretty proud of myself because I'm not buying just, you know, stupid things. You know, I bought sneakers and whatever, but a lot of it's equipment. I mean, I our assets. I, I think one of the things that like our generation really needs to focus on, especially teaching the younger generations, like our parents and nothing against them. They, they did what they had to do. They were taught what they were taught, but they were that, that and the boomer generation that was very much like go to school, get an education, go to college, get a union job and go. And we're very much like, yo, there's something not right about this. And like, even like now in college, there's these influencer classes and you have all these people like nobody wants to work anymore. And it's like, no, that's, that's not true. People don't want to work in 60, 70 hours, mm -hmm. breaking their ass in a nine to five and then have no life. They want to be able to make quick money fast, which you have the ability to do nowadays, but it's just up to like our generation to really push that narrative and teach them how to do these things and open businesses and really take care of themselves, their mental health, everything, because that's what's going to change the world. Not us doing it. I mean, not us doing it now, but us teaching everybody who can then carry that torch into it. Absolutely. And I think like you said, like um, our parents and our grandparents before us was the work harder generation. And we're lucky because we got some of that. And now we're in like a new phase of like work smarter. Hey, let's just be honest. Everybody's not made to run a business. Everybody's not made to be an entrepreneur. And I think a lot of people need to like look at themselves and know that because you can help the person that is. You know, if I know you have a biz a good business mind and acumen, and I'm not really into that, I need to be working with you. 
because I'm working for a purpose, you know, um, not necessarily always just working for the man or whatever the man is, but like, hey, you guys might have a great business idea and I'm a great role player. I can help you guys business scale and we all win. But a lot of people, you know, I think everybody wants to be this influencer. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. It's not for everybody. No. Nah. So you got to know what's for you. And I think it takes a lot of like, you got to push FOMO out because it's like, oh, all these people are doing so many things. And it's like fast money. If you can make fast money, you can lose fast money. That's how I look at it. I want steady, gradual. I call it like the J. Cole rollout. I want the J. Cole career. J. Cole had a slow start and it just rose to the top. That's how I want my life to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble because, you know, acting is my main thing. But right now there's like the writer's strike and all this mm -hmm. stuff happening. And I, you know, it's just been dead. So I'm like, well, how else am I getting my income? Because I'm not an influencer. I, I don't particularly care for social media. Yep. And I don't want to flaunt my, like, I just don't, that's not me. And maybe that's just my generation. And there's like people after me who are like doing it and doing it well, but that's just not something that I'm interested in. And I think it's like important to find something that you're happy with. You don't want to just yeah. do a job because it fulfills your income. You also want to be happy doing it. I think you got to find balance because you got to find a purpose and purpose is what keeps everybody going. But Absolutely. sometimes your purpose isn't going to pay your bills. Right. So you got to find the proper balance in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, man. Uh, a lot of people today don't want to trade their time for money. It's like, I want to work, but I don't want to work all day unless it's for my thing. I'm sure like if it comes to acting, you'll work on that all day long. You'll be doing auditions all day long. So I think that's the balance of it. You know, it's trading time for money. You don't want to do it. So one thing you have to do is figure out first the biggest bill, how to offset your rent. A lot of people are doing that with Airbnb. Some people tried it with Toro. I'm not, I don't. I always get real itchy about um, car rentals because I feel like when people rent a car, they just treat it like crap. Right. But I, I've seen a lot of people out here in LA and it surprised me because I wish they would have told me, find out ways to offset their rent. Like they're not making any income, but they're offsetting the rent. It's like I have this one asset that pays for my rent and I can scramble and scratch up whatever else to survive. Yeah, yeah, that passive income. Like, yeah. We had somebody out here who was selling like towels or some on Amazon. Look, yeah, dude. Like, yeah. It, there's so like there's so many ways to make money nowadays. And like, yo, YouTube University, like, you don't need to go to a fucking Ivy League school. You can go on YouTube and learn the same fucking shit. Like during uh the pandemic, I took uh the key uh the key to being happy is one of the number one classes at fucking Harvard. Yeah. And you could just take it online and they offered it for a free course during the pandemic. It's actually one of the coolest courses ever. Just like the difference between uh, happy people and non-happy people and some of the things that like bring you up and like focusing on. And a big part of it was like you need to focus on the enjoyment of your life. Life isn't work, 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 and then enjoy the fruits of your labor. It's mm -hmm. like you got to enjoy life as it is. Enjoy the journey of it and the people in it. That's more important than what you're making. Ooh, that's the key to try to enjoy the journey because the journey's hard, man. The, the road is a rough road. It's cobblestone. It's rocks in it. It's potholes. But you have to enjoy the ride. You know, it's like uh, one of those hay rides back in the day. Yeah. It's a hay ride. You bumping around and you're getting scratched up, but you got to like find fun out of it. And that's speaking to you, like finding your purpose. Like what's your purpose? Because when you know your purpose, you might have to get a job on the side to support the purpose, but you're a little bit more happy to do it because you know what you want to do. And I feel like the sad part is a lot of people don't understand what their purpose is. And I think there need to be a lot more like teachings on how to find your purpose, what drives you. Because if you don't have purpose, you don't have anything. No. I think a big part of that too is um, appreciating the lessons along the way. Yeah. Because there's so much you can, like everyone's so afraid to fail, but there is so much you can learn from failure. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear that, but that's, that's, that's like, but you know, I always say this too, because, um, when I go through like my hardest times, I hate it. And then I'm mad and then I'm cursing. And I go, man, if this never happened, how naive I would have been to this world. You know, like if everything would have went right and then 10 years later, everything went wrong. I don't know where I would be at. Nope. I'm glad to have, it's kind of like the stock market where it goes up, pulls back, goes up. I'm so grateful for those pullback moments because it gives you another moment to like learn what life really is. Life is not always going to be rainbows and stars. It's nah. not always going to go your way. You know, things are going to happen, but always in those moments, even though I hate when those moments happen, I learned the biggest lesson in my life. Yeah. I mean, without the losses, you don't appreciate the wins as much. Yeah. If you never lose and you're always winning, you're just like, 
it doesn't mean anything. No, but sometimes you be on a losing streak so long, like God, I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. No, I get. <laughs> it's like help the points. No. Yeah, dark cloud following you all over. No, you I go. promise, yeah. I get it. Like uh, I didn't need another one. Right, right, right. <laughs> <Not> no more. <laughs> I, I think the cool, like the cool thing for me is I've been through enough failures, but I've grown enough that I can actually look back on everything and see how all the dots connect and why I had to learn that. And like, you know, I had some of the biggest breakdowns of my life doing this in Skydex and hospitality but i've learned so much i've met so many people and i've set all this up and i ha if i didn't i would have never would have been able to pull all this off or have the connects to pull it off or actually just be able to sit here and open up as a person and a human being and talk about what the is going on in my life mm -hmm. and for me i think it pushed me out of my comfort zone and i always been one to kind of like take risks but like i'm kind of like down for anything and i think that works to my benefit because I'm not a guy that's so in his ego where it's like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'll be like, I'll try that. And that has helped me meet different types of people, um, experience new things that I started to love and just, you know, always push myself. I think life is always about pushing the boundaries. It's like if you're in this bubble, like pushing it just to make it a little bit bigger and bigger. And hopefully by the time you're at old age, you have such a big bubble full of knowledge and experiences. You can pass that on uh, to the next generation. For me, it'd be my son. Yeah, man, that, that comfort of like stepping outside the box, like Will Smith has this quote. I mean, I don't know if we can be quoting Will Smith anymore. I love but, Will Smith. Um, Big Willie. I still do too. He does have some good knowledge. He does he have some a good, great book. But, but his book was amazing. But one of his things that always sticks out to me, it's that the greatest things in life happen on the other side of fear. Yeah. So it's like once you step out of that comfort zone, yo, man, it's a whole new f***ing world out there. It's crazy. There's so much you can do and like... Like we said, you don't have to have the regular nine to five job anymore. You can do and come up with and create whatever you want. You could. Like everybody has their own lane now. But you know what's scary about that? Um, because we say that to everybody and it doesn't work, right? And I'm not saying it's not possible, but it doesn't work because the first foundation you need to have is structure. If you're not a structured person, you're going nowhere fast. You're going five different directions at once. It's like... If we all had a rope and we're pulling one person in the middle, it's just tug of war, right? And I think people really need to understand the importance of structure and discipline Time before you want to do anything. Time management. Time management. Yeah, time but that's management, part that's of structure, right? Yeah, but also morning routine. You know, even for people, like some people only have a great routine in their workplace because they're forced to, right? And then when it's time to do, go on their own, they're waking up late whenever they're drinking the night before, they're doing whatever that they wouldn't do when they go to their nine to five. So it's like, oh, you're only disciplined for someone else, but you're not disciplined for yourself. So self-discipline is the first thing I tell everybody, like you have to master yourself, which is hard because like I said, people will wake up early, put in late hours for a job. And then when they work on their own, they're all over the place. It's like, what happened to the discipline? What happened to the structure? And it's like, you're only structured when you're forced into it. That's not good. So uh, speak on your routine and your structure. What, what did you find that helps you? Well, for me, I was like, um, I read this magazine a long time ago and it had like all these people that woke up at 5 a.m., all these millionaires, like from Kevin Hart to all these people. And I was like, cool. And then I dated this girl. She was like 22 years old. She worked for herself and she woke up, woke up every day at 5 a.m. and was done her day by 12 noon. And I was like, that is gangster, yo. That's the most gangster shit I've ever seen. And she was only 22 and I'm learning so much from her. And she was dedicated. She wake up, she write her notes, she does her calls. And I'm like blown away because I'm, I'm taking myself like I'm a pretty structured dude now. Like, oh, I, I was blown away. So like years later, I, I remember that and I was like, look, if I want to be a millionaire, I need to start living like a millionaire and not like a millionaire that just came up like out of nowhere, you know, whatever, like some fluke, somebody that worked their ass off to become a millionaire. So I said, the first thing is I'm going to wake up and I'm going to work out. I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. And I think the first thing for me that I want to make sure is important is my health because I have a son and I want to be willing and able and alive, you know, throughout his life. So I'm like fitness and health comes first. It has to come first in my life. So that's the first thing I do when I wake up. And then from there, I structure my day whether it's business or if I'm learning something new, I take um, from about 7.30 to noon to study. If, I'm, if I want to learn some new skills, like right now I'm studying stock trading, I take all that time to just learn. And then after that, I just you know do whatever else I got to do, like run errands, grocery shop, X, Y, and Z, do everything else for the world. But I wanted to have four hours dedicated to my purpose and what I wanted to do every day. 
And I've been doing that for the past eight months. And what time do you go to sleep? Like how many hours of sleep you try to get? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I go to sleep 10, 11. And then I still DJ. So sometimes 2 a.m. And a lot of times I got to wake my ass up at five because what would I do if I was running a multi-million dollar company? I'm like living in this fantasy world. If I'm running a multi-million dollar company and I'm working at 2 a.m., I still got to get my ass up at 5 a.m. There's no excuses. And that doesn't happen every single time, but I try to run my motor like that. I f*** with it. I wish I could. I, I, I try, I, man. Like, I do no, a, you can't. I do it selectively. Yeah. No, you, you just have to. Yeah, you just yeah. have to be like, yo, I'm doing this. When you get around that 11 a.m. time after you wake up at 5 and you've accomplished so much and your day is just starting, it's a different feeling, dude. And I, I really, I don't, I don't think everybody needs to wake up at five, but getting a lot of your work done and having that time to yourself, turn the phone off before everybody wakes up and you, you just feel so motivated where it's like, it's 11 AM and I studied script or I read this book for two hours to myself. It just feels good. But, um, it is a different class of people. Like you're, you're done with your day and everybody, there's a lot of people just starting it and dude, you feel like I'm, I one up everyone. And you just feel like you, you feel so much gratitude to yeah. yourself because you're looking at it, it's like, oh, I got time to get lunch with my friends still. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, I, I don't feel like I slacked. So with all the self-discipline and all these new things you're learning, what are some of the things that you're now working on? I'm working on a company with my friend Lo. It's called Low Key Connections. And we're, um, we create events where we take corporate dollars and we help infuse it into black and brown communities. Um, so right now we're working with entrepreneurship and people with small businesses, also um, job readiness and um, another word for job readiness where people get work, you know, what all that you want to call it, recruitment, X, Y, and Z. Um, so we're doing that. And that's a partner I worked with at iHeart Studios when I worked in radio and we worked together and we came up with a lot of ca uh, campaigns there. So we took a lot of our connections and we say, hey, we're going to start our own company and we're going to do it outside of this media conglomerate because a lot of the work we did, we came up with it on our own. We put these things on and, you know, iHeart was a big help, but they got a big piece of it and we did all the work. And it was like, after a while, once you get your feet wet, it's like, you got to make that jump and do it on your own. Um, and then of course I'm still DJing. I'm DJing twice a week. I have two residencies out here at LA. Um, so at the Continental Club each and every Wednesday and at Classic Cat in West Hollywood on Saturdays. Outside of that, I shoot for Serato which is the DJ company we all use, the program. I do a lot of their still photos for um, this program called Serato Studio that I'm now also making remixes on. So I'm making my own remixes for the first time ever. I'm like producing. He's doing that TikTok thing that you need to start doing. I'm trying. Look, it, it takes a lot for me to do content these days because I've done content. But look, no, no, it's different because I've done content my whole life. So for me, I have a problem... One, doing things other people do. That's one of my biggest problems. I, if I see too many people do it, I will not do it. Like, I will not do it. Like, I wanted to, like, DJ live on Instagram, and I seen, like, too many DJs doing it. I was like, I'm not doing it. Um, so that's one problem of mine. So this is me pushing out of my comfort zone. I'm seeing, like, people making remixes, and I was like, let me just try to go with the trend for once. I can't always been... Be the guy that's like, I'm going against See? the trend. Because I, I start feeling like the old angry guy at that point. Where it's like, oh, everybody's doing that. I, yeah. I don't want to be the old angry guy. Right. Are you the old angry guy? I, th I feel like I am nowadays with, with, with social media. Yeah, I think so. He's very angry, He's very angry at it. Stand, but, but the difference for me, I don't know if you were like this. I My whole life was social media. I was there when I had Facebook when it first opened. I had MySpace. I had Twitter. I've done it so much where I was like, I think I've done enough. Like, I like to grow. So I don't like being in the same positions. But if you've never done it before, it might be time to do something new. I've had them all, but I, I've never been super active on any any platform. We'll see. I, I just, I don't even know what I, I would do on you, TikTok. I don't, I don't think you have a choice. I don't even know what I would, like. You know what? And I said that too for a long time because I always would go on ideas people gave me. And I think you just got to dig in and be like, what do you want to tell the world regardless if anybody was watching or not? Like Mikey likes to talk about mental health and everything. And I think if no one was watching, he would still have that passion to talk about. And I think that's how you got to do it with content where like, okay, so what has no views? I'm proud of this content where if someone sees it, this is a great representation of me. And for me right now, my passion is like financial literacy. So I already know after a certain point, I'm probably going to be on Instagram and TikTok talking about things I found on my journey of financial literacy because I want, it's something I want for everybody. 
So I think it's kind of like digging deep in. It's like, what is that thing about me? And it might not be something anybody even know about. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you because you've supported me in that aspect where like you've helped me film a couple of videos. Yeah. This man DJed my first event, which I was so f***ing grateful for and absolutely killed it. Playing all the R&B hits. It was f***ing awesome. So, but Damage, man, we really appreciate you coming yes, back. thank you. Yeah, can't thank wait you. to see more of your uh, of what's going on with all the financial literacy. Can't yes. wait. We'll keep you. We'll keep everybody in a loop. This was the chaos checking. Peace.